right, now today we're going to be taking a look at this little guy. Uh, got it at a train sale. Uh, at a swap for uh, one of those local... Well, not local. It was at the uh, the National End Scale Convention in Pittsburgh. And uh, saw it, loved it, thought I'd give it a whirl. Uh, however, I failed to realize that the, the coupler here is the newer style knuckle couplers. And of course, I only have the... Kato ones on some of them, and but mainly the Rapido couplers, which are the bigger older ones. So I can't really use this. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick review here and see if I can sell it back uh, to some lucky customer on eBay. All right, here it is on the track. Of course, it has the wrong connector on the back, so there's nothing I can run behind it. Still going to kind of do a quick little run around while I have it and uh, document that I did in fact own this at one point. So I'll get it going here and start it up. Now the overall look of this thing is kind of what drew me to it to begin with. I think it looks pretty good for what it is. It's definitely going to be a cheaper version of it. Uh, made by Bachman, so you know what that means. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, it was only $22, and I figured, hey, I'd go for it, it looks good, uh, it pales in comparison to my other little guy here that I've done before, as part of the Back to the Future review, which is pretty cool, if you haven't seen that, check it out, um, which I'd expect that other one to be, considering that one was almost, uh, four times as much as what I paid for this guy, uh, bought it used, don't have the original box, but it did come in a box, but I won't even bother to show it because, you know, it's not original. But, uh, yeah, not bad on the look. I'm giving it a 7. Because uh, it's... I like these older ones. They're kind of cool. Cool looking. And the paint scheme isn't that bad either. When it comes to the materials used on this thing, uh, it's not terrible, especially for a Bachman. Uh, you usually expect the worst. However, the whole casing, or the whole up front here, is made of metal with some plastic bits on the side. And it also has the world's tiniest, tiniest wheels, if I can even zoom in on there. Uh, for that, if it stays in focus, I doubt it will. But it has just the, the smallest wheels I think I've ever seen on, on, a, on a car, or a train. For end scale, I mean, tiny. Even on the back here, uh, on the tender, has these tiny, tiny, tiny little wheels. So, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm splitting it right down the middle, giving it a 5 on this rating. Because I think they did, you know, a decent job. Now, I don't think you see these uh, mid-1800s type of engine too often. There are a lot of these out there made by Bachman, but uh, just for the style of, its, of itself, you don't see too many. I'm giving it a 7. That might be on the high side, but hey, what can you do? That's what I'm giving it. Now the noise of this thing is not quiet by any means, and I didn't really expect it, especially for what I paid for it. Especially for what it is, a cheapo Bachman uh, type of engine. <laughs> Giving it a 3, because it is quite loud. Now this thing barely needs any power to get going. Uh, it starts going up around maybe 20-25% of the way up the dial. Really good. I'm giving it a 10 because I've never seen anything like it. It moves with very little power and has quite the top speed as well. Now the max speed of this thing is just ridiculous. Where'd it go? I know there's no cars behind it, but geez.
Motor strength, can't really pull anything, but it uh, seems to be okay. I'm giving it a 5 right in the middle. Alright, now here it is coming around the corner there for its slow crawl test. You can see it hesitates quite a bit. It's very jerky. Not very jerky, but you know, fairly jerky. <laughs> um, giving it a three. I think that's fair for this one. Derailed it, like I said, barely got it, barely used it. Uh, haven't had too much experience with it, but because it's got those tiny little wheels, uh, it's hard to get on, especially without a rear railer. Even with a rear railer, these things go all over the place. I'm giving it a six, even though it hasn't really derailed when I'm running it, it, it can be quite hard to get on. Problems, haven't really had any, but I haven't really had it that long either, so I've really only run it when I first got it and uh, to do this review, so can't really speak to anything. However, the uh, the knuckle coupler in the back, to me, is a big problem. Not really a ding against the model, but uh, I will knock it down to five since I, I personally can't really use it. <laughs> sure, I could maybe convert it, but, you know, I'd rather sell it back. Now the price I paid, like I said, was $22. It's not bad. I mean, $22, that's, that's hardly nothing. Especially when it comes to these N-scale model trains, because they are expensive. Uh, giving it an 8, because I think $22 for this, this engine is pretty good. Especially when it retailed for originally, I think, I saw around 60 65 something like that. Don't know how old it is, but that's the price point I saw. Uh, however, you cannot, cannot compare it to this baby, which I paid only 22 or 20 even for. So when it comes to would I rather have this for 20 or this for 22, no comparison whatsoever. Uh, but still a great deal, I think, all around for, uh, for what you end up getting there. Alright, well, when you total it all up, comes in at 59 Not the best, certainly down the low side, but hey, it was only $22. And I knew what I was getting myself into when I bought this thing. Because uh, it did seem rather on the low end up front, obviously. Am I happy I got it? Yes. But I'm also going to try to sell it back to eBay. Probably start the bidding at 25 if you're interested. I uh, don't know when I'll put it up, but it will be out there at some point to try to sell this thing off. So that pretty much wraps up this one. Stay tuned for more, a lot more to come.